Hello everyone. Welcome back to the course Stream Processing. Till now we have looked into what is data exchange and what does data exchange mean in terms of stream processing. In this week video, let's talk about what is Kafka streaming. How can we take our similar notice board example and put Kafka as a central streaming architecture. We're gonna see some of the nitty gritty details of Kafka, how Kafka scales, how Kafka provides robustness, uh, and other nitty-gritty things about Kafka contributions. So without any delay, let's take a look into it. We are back to our notice board example, and this notice board is backed by Kafka. We have seen previously that in every case, we have topics. So in this notice board, we have two topics. Let's just call them ABC topic and XYZ topic. We have producers, which are producing to these topics can be relevant to a particular use case or a particular scenario. And then there are consumers on the other side, which are consuming from this topic. What is a topic? Kafka uses topic as a nomenclature a lot. So it's important that we dig deep into what is actually a topic. A topic is nothing but a continuous stream of events. What is an event actually? So for our case, let's say we are uh, building up a application which is recording the temperature of this room every 30 seconds. And the event in that case would be, uh, what's the temperature of this room at this particular timestamp? And let's say the temperature is 32 degrees Celsius and that will be recorded. Then in the next 30 seconds, the temperature uh, application would again record the temperature and then again send out an event. And that event would again contain the temperature of the room. And these events across time are basically nothing but a single data point at a certain timestamp. The collection of these events goes into our topic and those events are basically read by our consumer. In Kafka, we generally talk about logs. Logs are nothing but the way we store events in a topic. If you are familiar with uh, how data is stored in a database, generally they use B trees or something like that. Uh, but in Kafka, when you store data, you store them in terms of logs. So whenever anybody is talking about logs, they are generally talking about how the data is actually stored inside of the topic. But let's take a deeper look into what is an event how events are actually structured inside of Kafka. Each event generally contains of something which is called a message. A message can have different properties, can have certain required fields and non-required fields, which we will look deeper into. Uh, but basically, each event will contain certain message. In the example we were talking about, the message would have been the timestamp uh, and the temperature of the room. In Kafka, the message basically looks like this. It has three structures. It has a key, a value, and a timestamp. The key is used for determining where the, uh, what is the key of that particular message. It will be used for partitioning, but we will look into that deeper. The value is actually the value or the data exchange you want to do. Uh, and the timestamp is uh, basically uh, what's the exact timestamp when you were releasing this message. We did take a look into what Kafka is, what topics are, uh, what is a message or an event inside a, a topic. Uh, and we saw some data exchange properties of a stream processing or Kafka. But why is Kafka special? What does Kafka provide which other uh, streaming platforms or other uh, APIs uh, do not provide? Kafka is especially important because uh, it provides a lot of robustness to your topic or reliability to your topic. And by that, I mean, even if your servers are going down or your nodes are going down, you will still receive the data. That's a property uh, which uh, Kafka uh, has, and that's basically called replication. So it replicates data across different fields, which allows it to actually provide you the robustness or reliability you will need uh, when building a stream processing system. It adds a lot of flexibility. So your topics can be super small, super big, 
you can have uh, hundreds of uh, consumers consuming from it or even one consumer consuming from it uh, and there is a lot of flexibility which kafka can provide uh, with the inter integration of kafka connect ksql db uh, there is even more flexibility and more uh, options you have uh, there is also flexibility to actually store all your data in like a tier storage where you do not pay a lot of money for it, uh, but at the same time, the data is available for you in case you need to uh, need to get that back into the topic or need to do some offline analysis. Uh, and Kafka also provides uh, scalability. If your data size increases from 10 events per second to 1000 events per second, no problems, Kafka can handle that. These are the main properties why Kafka is so popular in the streaming space. It does not only provide scalability and robustness, but it also has flexibility inbuilt into it. So how do we exchange data in Kafka? We produce a message to a Kafka topic or put it out on a notice board. Uh, people registered to the topic or interested in the topic will be able to now read the message. But the message is not lost. There is kind of a retention or an expiration on top of topics, uh, which allows them to sustain some of the messages for longer duration of time. Once a consumer reads the message, it doesn't mean that the other consumers cannot read it anymore. This is all what Kafka provides in terms of data exchange, but it does it with robustness, flexibility, and scalability in mind. We discussed a lot in this week. But let's take a step back and talk about the need of stream processing in real world scenarios. Uh, not so long ago, we had an architecture of monoliths. Those monoliths generally talked to a database, a central database. Uh, these monoliths used to be generally big codes, which uh, which would be able to talk to one of uh, or many of the databases together. Uh, but this architecture started causing some issue. Without going into details regarding what monolith versus microservices, the trend these days is to work towards microservices. And what happens in that case is, uh, we have many small applications now, uh, and these small applications to together right now forms the microservice architecture. But these microservices do need to talk to each other. They tend to talk to each other sometimes through uh, APIs. Uh, they can also talk to each other through a message bus. Uh, they can also communicate through some other central database, which might be accessible to all of them together. Uh, or they might be talking to individual databases and some microservices can have access to certain databases and others not. Generally, this architecture works okay until your microservice is are not growing that much or your data size uh, or your API size is just not that much and that's fine. But with more and more uh, microservices with increase in data, you need something like a consistent uh, message bus or a streaming service in which you can communicate through. So, what happens in this case is uh, generally one of the microservice writes to a Kafka topic. Those topics are generally in terms of events as we have already discussed. And whenever another microservice is interested in talking uh, or reading from this Kafka message, they can generally do that. Uh, let's so. Another microservice might be able to read these messages. Uh, and this microservice might be able to read these messages. Uh, and the one which is responsible for writing is just writing to Kafka for the communication purposes. This is all well and good, but Kafka allows us also to do the, something different. So we talked that we have a central database. Uh, and we also have microservices. Uh, and obviously the transition does not happen uh, in, in one go. So sometimes it's required to have multiple data sources. So these microservices 
working closely with the database or with the monolith service. Uh, and that's where Kafka also provides something which is called CDC. Uh, so in this case, we will have our Kafka messages uh, and the database would be able to write to these Kafka topic. Uh, and anybody who's interested in any microservices interested in uh, can read from this Kafka topics, uh, basically. Uh, and the process is called CDC, uh, change data capture. Uh, this is the part of Kafka Connect, which we are going to talk in later videos. Uh, but you can already see uh, how, how Kafka can provide as a bridge between these kind of architectures as well.